my mine mine won't be as long as uh, Hui Ren's. Uh, mainly mainly because it's not really technical, <laughs> right? Okay, so um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, Gutenberg. Uh, it's the new WordPress editor that um, uh, WordPress uh, is trying to come up with. Um, so the agenda will be what is Gutenberg, how to install uh, in order to play around. Uh, and I will do a bit of hands-on on the new editor. And after that, we'll consider some pros and cons of the editor, right? So first, what is uh, Gutenberg? Um, it's a new take on the WordPress editor. It's named after Johannes uh, Gutenberg, who invented the movable printing, movable type printing press um, about 500 years ago. Uh, this is not, be conf not to be confused with um, Project Gutenberg, which is, uh, some of you may know, is an online uh, repository for books uh, which copyright has already expired. Um, so the current editor, um, how many of you actually use uh, WordPress here? Or have used WordPress before? Yeah, okay. So you all may, uh, if you all can uh, remember, it's actually um, a tiny MCE, right? So it utilizes a lot of short codes and uh, HTML codes right now in order to achieve uh, a lot of customized looks, right? And Gutenberg aims to make it easy for uh, people who write um, by embracing little blocks and also adding more advanced uh, layout options. Uh, but that's in bracket, hopefully, because uh, right now it's not inside it uh, yet. Okay. So currently it is in beta, um, beta in bold, because uh, it's not released yet in the core. Uh, things are expected to break. It's not, it's not polished, it's not for the faint-hearted. Uh, do not use it on the production sites. Uh, if you are running it on your, uh, if you want to try it on um, client's website, but if your own website you want to uh, to use it, to, uh, that you use to experiment, go ahead and do it. I did it from my own personal website. So it's because um, as end users, we are actually encouraged to test it by installing it as a plugin. Uh, we can file in, we can file um, uh, comments in the support forums or file a ticket in the GitHub project. And hopefully this will be rolled out in WordPress um, 5.0, which it's about judging by the current um, uh, deployment patterns uh, of uh, every major version between four to six months, it should be by the end of next year, right? So this actually gives enough time for both um, um, plugin developers, team developers, and um, end users to get used to the new uh, editor, right? So how you install Gutenberg is that uh, it's actually made available as a plugin uh, just recently. Uh, it requires um, WordPress 4.8, which is the latest version. So to show you the page, right? So this is a plugin page for uh, Gutenberg, right? Uh, in here, it also says here, this is a beta software. Do not run it on production sites. Uh, Right, there are FAQ on how to get feedbacks and how to contribute. So, uh, to contribute to this, you do not need to be a developer yourself. You can just be an end user who um, suddenly find, found some bugs or issues that you are not aware of, and then you can um, go to their um, plugins, go go to their GitHub. So, say for example, GitHub pages, um, they have a lot of um, feedbacks testing feedbacks and um, issues raised. So the developers themselves, they can um, uh, prioritize what to fix and what to uh, put in. Some of them are actually enhancements. Same goes for the support uh, forums here, right? Okay, so moving on explore to exploring uh, Gutenberg. Uh, this is what I'm going to cover, um, hopefully in time. Uh, so first is the new menu, comparing between old editor, new editor, um, the mobile view, and also exploring some of the blocks uh, there. Um, do remind me if I have um, slip out some later, right? So first thing first, sorry. Um, this is Gutenberg after installing, right? How you assess it is uh, through this um, this this. Uh, uh, menu option here, Gutenberg new post. It has new post function, which you can actually see over here. 
or a demo, or, or, or demo itself. So the demo basically have this basic welcome to um, the Gutenberg editor with the different uh, with all the different blocks are already been uh, used, right? Another way to as, uh, to assess it is that after you install, you can actually see that there's an additional link here called Gutenberg, which assess which uh, will directs you to the Gutenberg editor. Okay. So let me first compare the uh, old and new editor. So this is a new editor, right? This is the old editor. <laughs> yeah. So you can see that it's um, a lot more cluttered with um, with the various options at the sidebars, right? And uh, there's also the extra stuff at the bottom here, where the absurd text and everything else. Okay. And whereas in the new editor, right now it um, has the post settings hidden over here, right? You can actually, um, it's a drop down menu. Um, and it actually has more screen space just for the post itself. <coughs> to look at the mobile view, let me collect this menu first and just. Right. So uh, let me go to the so uh, it's a responsive design. So you can actually see that uh, the Gutenberg editor itself is already uh, you can actually edit on mobile uh, without much um, fuss. Whereas if you look at uh, this. It's uh, the tiny MCE bus here is taking out a lot of space. And um, I, I also have other plugins installed on there. That's why it, it looks very bloated as well. Um, on a pure vanilla one, you probably see only uh, yeah, this much. But still, it's a lot of space that has been used up, right? Okay, and then now let's explore the blocks. So the blocks are basically break, um, break, uh, broken now into uh, text blocks, uh, table, live HT, um, buttons, and, and bit views. So those are just some examples. So for text blocks, it's basically just um, text itself where you can uh, um, input a text. And if you want to create a new block, you can just basically um, double enter in order to break into a new block and say, and uh, enter your text in a new block, right? And not only that, you can actually adjust your block up and down uh, with these buttons here and the formatting alignments uh, here as well. There are also um, other uh, fun uh, settings that you can see on the side here as well. I will not go into in depth, you can play around uh, when you are back uh, at home, right? Um, table view, let me try to find a table view. Right, so this is a table view. Okay, so um, this table view here, you can actually uh, insert in. Um, right, to insert, right now to insert, we have to go all the way down and hit this plus button and insert the table. And then. Um, settings are not working for right now. <laughs> yeah, so as expected, there will be bugs, right? But um, and not only that, for a live HTML view, you can actually uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I'm not able to get it out right now. Yeah, so this uh, plugin has just came out recently, so I'm also very a bit unfamiliar with these two, but uh, basically what this uh, live HTML editor is supposed to do is that when you switch over, you can switch over just only the block itself to the HTML view instead of uh, looking into the, in the text view itself because text view, it's a bit um, messy, right? You will notice that there are actually additional text here these additional comments here, 
which is not in the um, which is not in in the tiny MCE. So if you look at the tiny MCE, if I go to text, it actually has it, but it doesn't format properly right now. Uh, on the front end, you will not see the text at all. Yeah, so don't need to worry about that. Okay, and then um, there are also buttons that is uh, included here. So basically, buttons are additional blocks which are, will help you to create um, call to action buttons without installing additional plugins or uh, do additional formatting or stuff like that. So it's a good block for people who wants to like create a product page or a um, uh, co or, or contact us button without really um, going into the design, right? And there's also the embed function. Embedding is very simple. Um, so you just need to, there's actually a long list of um, providers like um, Flickr, Reddit, uh, Spotify, YouTube, inside here already in this list. So basically, just need to click on this, and then you just need to put in uh, the YouTube URL, right? Okay. So the pros of uh, Gutenberg is that uh, TinyMC is good in the sense that it helps uh, people to put in the stuff that they want into the site. But it has to move on from Tiny NCE because um, there are actually a lot of issues with Tiny NCE. Uh, sometimes you might, some of you might face unexpected uh, formatting issues. Uh, some might, and also how many writers do you know that actually know HTML, right? So usually when writers finish writing already, you go through the editor, and the editor will sometimes put in additional um, HTML in order to put in things like related articles or uh, you may like this post as well, right? And for publishers that like medium style editing, um, Gutenberg is something that is similar to what um, medium has, right? And actually a while ago, Matt um, Mullenberg, who is the uh, WordPress um, co-founder and or creator, either one <laughs> word, they, he actually tried medium, writing a post on medium to uh, announce a new release of a uh, WordPress uh, version. And thereafter, on his personal blog, he actually uh, went, went on to say that uh, he's looking into how, better to, how to better uh, um, um, uh, improve the writing experience. And he said, what, 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 what not, what's not better than to uh, go into medium itself and experience the entire user interface? And, um, learn from there, right? So uh, that's one thing that I suppose taken uh, from. Uh, as you can see, there's more screen space, less distraction. Um, the blocks and alignment options are also making it easier for responsive sites. Um, it also works well on mobile, so you can actually edit uh, your stuff on mobile. Um, the ability, there's also the ability for team and plugin developers to add their own custom blocks. Um, right now, uh, because Gutenberg is something new, so um, the developers are more or less, uh, uh, I won't say hesitant, but gear slowly gearing into um, providing custom blocks for Gutenberg, right? Given that uh, is um, th there is a drive to include this in um, the WordPress core in a at least a year time, right? But currently, the con is that um, there's no Markdown support. So whoever likes Markdown, uh, you have to uh, stay off it for the moment. Um, the learning curve-wise, well, some of um, if you are new to WordPress, which you guys are really not, uh, if you're new to WordPress, the learning curve is actually very easy because you don't need to unlearn um, what you have learned. And um, and so for that more experience, it actually took me a while as well, uh, the better part of today to actually get used to the interface. Um, there are no custom meta boxes yet. So things like um, the Yoast uh, SEO plugin, if you look at the Gutenberg um, interface just now, realize that the Yoast SEO plugin is not there, right? Um, 
but they are looking into how to uh, into how to provide the same kind same level of information to the users as well the, uh, most likely in a using a pre product pre uh, publication uh, model there are also no responsive columns yet so the thing is that uh, in WordPress uh, by default there's no responsive columns uh, but there are a lot of page builders like uh, visual composer uh, they they have um, responsive uh, columns inside and that's something that a lot of people are looking for so this is something that uh, a lot of people are actually looking forward to for eventual inclusion um, but work compatibility is also a suspect in a sense that uh, because it's a complete break away for from tiny MCE right um, there was or there is, I'm not really sure, a drive to include Tiny MC into Gutenberg as well, uh, as a blog, which I, there's, there's some pushback on that as well. So um, don't bank on that. So better compatibility, compatibility with a lot of plugins. Um, we have to see how it goes when it release, right? The chances of you not being able to update to 5.0 or be help, it will likely be there, as long as the plugin developers, uh, or at least the, plug the developers of the plugins that you use or the teams that you use, they don't update their site, uh, their um, their um, files, their projects, right? Um, accessibility, right? Accessibility in the sense that if you are not, um, if you are somehow handicapped, right? Whether visual or what's not, uh, right now it's hard to uh, use and um, there are contributors who are looking to uh, improving the accessibility of this as well, right? So, but you have to be aware that Gutenberg is still in beta and, it's likely to, and it is likely to be in beta for at least a year. So the inclusion of it is like two major versions away. So fixes and um, features are being worked on at the moment. So there are some props that I have to give uh, or shout outs that I have to give to. Uh, first, it's this article, um, diving into the new Gutenberg WordPress editor. Um, so, basically, the reason why I give that is th this presentation is structured around um, this clearly written post that was published two days ago uh, while I was still scratching my head in Phuket at editing a wedding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the groove is in the audience. <laughs> Uh, WordPress, uh, sorry, no, uh, Microsoft Singapore for hosting us and uh, Michael Cheng for allowing uh, this PHP um, slash WordPress meetup to happen. Usually we have our meetup separately. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, who am I? I'm uh, Robert. Uh, you can contact me at uh, the email address there, and that is a caricature of me. Uh, any questions and or feedback or anything you can uh, raise now. Short codes. Um, short codes currently should still work, but uh, it's but it's best to move towards uh, custom blocks. After all, short codes are actually hacks that uh, was uh, put in in order to answer a uh, question. Um, a feature request from uh, the end users, like they want to put in uh, some custom customized stuff inside. Then, yeah, back then they realized, oh, I, I, we need something, and short codes was um, the answer. Yeah, but it's still a hack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can install Jetpack for that. Yes. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, but because I don't use Markdown, so I, I didn't explore that feature. Markdown is basically a format, uh, writing format. Uh, so instead of using um, like the uh, H1 or H2 text, right, you basically use things like dash and e the equal signs to um, to to. Hmm? Oh yes, the GitHub readme. That is a good one. Yeah. Um, raw. Okay, so this is the uh, front right. You won't see much of it because it's really formatted. But if you look at the 
um, at the raw. It's basically like this, yeah. So you notice um, the headings are like using the hash sign, text block, uh, the, the images are embedded in this manner. Yeah. So some writers like this. Yeah. Yes? Sorry? Are the admin styles automatically added so that you have form thing inside it? So if you have a custom theme and they have a custom styles. Right, right. So uh, let me. Right now, it's not really well formatted. So this is the front end. Oh, yes. Uh, Yeah, all these are all stock. So um, you can build custom blocks. Uh, there might be uh, developers who will try to be creative and use this custom block uh, functionality and and basically extend to make it dynamic. So uh, we we will see how it goes. Yeah, after all, it's something new. Yeah. Yes. Project Gutenberg, you mean the oh this plugin? Uh, this plugin is there for us to try out, actually. So it's to, it's for us to try out to give uh, uh, feedback to the um, contributors, the developing con developers, right? So in oh you mean you're talking about as a total editor by itself? Uh, I don't. Right now, I don't think there's talks of that yet. Yeah. Uh, you can, I think, but I'm not really sure about the. Yeah, after all, this is an open source project, right? Right now, he's hosting on his own, um, own, uh, own, own, own Git repo. So. You can go inside, um, explore, and see how, how you can extract it out and spin it off your own, make it um, Gutenberg uh, standalone. Yeah. I think the, the, the strategy that WordPress always uses is to uh, create a plugin. It's a new feature that's experimenting for the core, but before they actually integrate it in the core, they actually build an extension first. So once the extension is proven to work, then it became part of the core. In this case, it's actually I think it's on the trajectory so eventually make hopefully make this part of the core. Yeah. Uh, so it can be. Uh, it was never originally planned as a separate project or something you can just plug into your own application or own website uh, for your own use stuff. But I guess since the code is all open source and the JavaScript stuff is all there, you could still you could te theoretically just look through that code. You find the parts that make sense to you and maybe rip it out. Or if you look deeper, they may actually have a way to, like, hey, if you want to use this in your <laughs> personal site in, in a different capacity, they probably have some uh, guide there. Or, uh, I guess if you look at the development guide on how to contribute new blocks and stuff, and you can also from there get some clues about how to do this yourself. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a matter of reading to the source code. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, for now you can't really use it, but I guess, uh, like what I say, it's two releases away. Um, it will be next year, or at least until the next, mid of next year, or uh, end, towards the end of the year, of, of next year. So it gives um, the plugin and team developers sufficient time to update their, um, their teams and plugins to catch up with uh, 5.0, right? And I don't really think that you need to worry about WooCommerce. After all, Woo WooCommerce is under automatic right now, and uh, a lot of automatic staff are working on WordPress, uh, contributing to WordPress core as well, yeah. Yeah, so uh, for Yoast SEO plugin, um, I also know that they're also work looking into this and um, working a solution to 
to to to fit into the editor's um, experience. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Right. Okay. So before I end off, uh, I have an announcement to make. It's uh, WordCamp uh, Singapore 2017, right? So last year we actually hosted uh, WordCamp uh, 2016, Singapore 2016. It was quite a crowd, lah. Right. So 2017, this is the URL. Okay. So we are actually targeting about uh, 350 attendees. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, let me show you. Uh, so last year's photos first. So at least you know I'm not uh, pulling pulling words out of the air. Yeah. So uh, this is photos from last year, right? Uh, it was held here in Microsoft. Uh, for this year, we are trying to look. We are still looking for a very, uh, not looking. We are com we are confirming a venue right now at the moment, right? Uh, so don't even worry about the location. It'll still be around town. Okay. So these are just some photos, right? So the tracks are in uh, the talks are in a two track format. Um, there'll be talks for everyone essentially for designers, users, business people, developers, anyone that you can think of who are used WordPress in you know, one way or another, there will be, uh, there will be talks for them. We, as I mentioned, it will be held in town. Um, the date is October 28th. It's a Saturday. Okay. Um, there will be after party after the uh, conference. Uh, location will be, is to be confirmed and tickets will be released after the location is confirmed for um, the work camp. Okay. So right now, um, I know you're not the target crowd, but we are, as in, um, for sponsors at least, unless uh, there are CEOs here who is willing to sponsor us. Any CEOs <laughs> or decision makers? <laughs> right. But uh, we're also looking for speakers, right? Speak Here? Okay. Right, so um, we are looking for sp uh, sponsors and speakers. For speakers, we don't need, we, we do not need to be technical. You can be someone who is um, talking from a perspective of a designer or from an end user. Your experience of using WordPress and, and uh, what you want WordPress to be in the future and stuff like this. Uh, just uh, some of your talks. Uh, information on the sponsors and speakers that are on the website, right? Uh, you also can reach out to us uh, at the following address, Singapore at WorkCamp.org. Yeah, uh, we have we will have at least five eyeballs, five pair of eyeballs looking at this email address. Yeah. So that's all.